The following program contains distressing themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Jealousy Such a strange enemy I know It's all in my head But I can see it's standing in doorways down the street It's all in our heads Could you hurt the person you love the most? The same person that loves you more than anything Is there anything they could do that would cause you to want to physically harm them? Realistically, your answer is probably no, because, simply put, you love them with all your heart, and you trust them with the love you provide them with. A love that's often returned in mutual favor. A love that's unconditional and expressed through various acts of both mental and physical displays of affection. A love that evolves, escalates, and echoes through time without limits and without any constraints. No reasonably sane person would ever want to deliberately inflict pain on someone they truly love. But what happens when the person you think loves you the most does the most unthinkable thing? What happens when love rages violently at arm's length? And true love becomes true horror. I'm Mr. Black, and this is one of the most brutal cases I've ever had to research. You know how this works. I don't hold back on the details, and I come down hard upon the heads of those who steal life in cold blood. I am not unbiased. In most cases, my sympathy is reserved only for the victims and their families. That will never change. There is no mercy for evil on my channel. And the evil that you're going to learn about here is unspeakable. If you're uncertain about proceeding, run. Because you won't get another warning. This is the disturbing truth about the monster in Fidel Lopez. On September 20th, 2015, police dispatch in Sunrise, Florida, received a call that would lead police officers to a crime scene so brutal and so depraved that it would no doubt leave a staining mark on the small city that sits about 30 miles north of Miami and just slightly west of Fort Lauderdale. Though hard to fully understand due to the hysterical tone of the caller, the following audio clip is the actual 911 call received on that early Sunday morning at 3.39 a.m. 911, what is your emergency? Hello, fucking coming out by emergency, fucking in the bathroom. She get a breath, fucking, I'm gonna take a break out there. She's gonna die, man, come on. Okay, come in here, man, please. I can barely understand what's going on. Man, fuck, I know that she was slinky, and then, like, I know, I don't even know when she went to the bathroom, and when I went there, she was, it was, She's, she's just right there climbing with me. She works here. She's, 
The romantic man on the phone is Fidel Lopez. He was about 24 years old at the time. He can clearly be heard telling the operator that his girlfriend is struggling to breathe and that she's going to die. It sounds like Fidel is saying his girlfriend was drinking and he doesn't know what happened. Apparently, after he went to smoke a cigarette, he found her in the bathroom unable to breathe. It's hard for the dispatcher to understand what he's saying as she tries to acquire the whereabouts of the emergency. The recording ends without Mr. Lopez providing the 911 operator with an address. I'm not sure if the call was traced or if there's more to the recording that hasn't been released, but eventually, authorities were able to find the location of the caller. Shortly after, Sunrise police and a rescue team arrived at 1630 Northwest 128th Terrace. When they entered the apartment, they found a very drunk Fidel Lopez calling out for help as he knelt next to the unmoving naked body of his girlfriend, Maria Namath. The crying man was trying to shake the unconscious woman awake to no avail. But an unconscious girlfriend was not the only thing in the residence that raised intense alarms and drew high red flags for the responding officers. For starters, Maria was lying in a large pool of blood. There were also significant quantities of blood at the bottom of the closet. Blood plastered the walls of the hallway too, and even the floor in the bathroom was covered in blood. As police looked closer, they found multiple pieces of what appeared to be bloody chunks of flesh inside the closet. It quickly became clear that something had gone very wrong that night within the walls of that apartment. But the true details would later reveal an act so barbaric that it resembled the horrific work of a cartel torture video. But there was no cartel, just two people two people that were supposed to be in love. Lopez's mother says she was with her son and Maria hours before it happened, and they were happy and in love. While thoroughly investigating the apartment, officers found several large holes in the walls. The closet door had been removed and was lying on the hallway floor. There was also a sliding glass door that had been smashed into pieces and various other things around the apartment that clearly indicated a violent outburst had occurred. But Fidel Lopez couldn't explain anything that happened. Maria Namath was pronounced dead at 4.02 a.m. According to the medical examiner's report, she died from blood loss due to being eviscerated. The definition of eviscerated in this context is when you disembowel or remove the organs from someone's body. The cops had a lot of questions for Fidel Lopez, and he was quickly taken in for questioning. It was quite clear that they were treating him as a suspect in what they already believed was one of the most brutal murders in U.S. history. Maria Namath was 31 at the time of the incident and had been with Fidel Lopez for about a year. Fidel told police that he had met Maria at a nightclub while he was still living with the mother of his two young children. Maria had recently separated from her husband after eight years of marriage and, according to Lopez, the two hit it off well. 
As the couple became exclusive and their relationship intensified, they decided to move in together. At the start, they lived with Fidel's family in Hollywood, Florida while they looked for a place of their own. They finally found an apartment in Sunrise where Maria was the leasing manager. The couple happily moved in. About a week later, Maria Namath was murdered in the most brutal and sadistic way imaginable. On Saturday, September 19th, 2015, Lopez finished his work as a mechanic at Florida 595 Truck Stop and went home to meet Maria for dinner. It's reported that she prepared chicken, rice, and beans before the couple left to go share the meal with Fidel's mother at her house in Miami. Fidel's mother testified during the trial that the couple seemed happily in love that night. Nothing at all appeared out of ordinary to Fidel's family. After leaving the Lopez family residence, Maria and Fidel stopped by Chili's restaurant near their apartment for margaritas. When they left the restaurant, the couple dropped into the ABC Fine Wine and Spirits store, where they purchased a bottle of 1800 Reposado tequila before finally heading back home for the night. The couple hadn't purchased furniture for their new apartment yet, so they used a couple of cardboard boxes as tables. They cut limes and did shots of tequila as they listened to music on a cell phone. Everything seemed to be going great, and the evening was, by Fidel's account, going just fine. Over half a bottle of tequila later, something turned in Fidel Lopez that caused him to fly into a rage. He openly admitted to shattering the sliding glass door, punching holes in the walls, and even ripping off the closet door. He remembered all that but claimed he was too drunk to remember what caused him to explode. Nevertheless, he told investigators that he and Maria made up before proceeding to have rough sex in the closet. Later, he claims that the pair somehow ended up in the bathroom where Maria needed to throw up, and that's when he said he left Maria to go smoke a cigarette outside. But when he came back, he said she stopped breathing. Even though Fidel Lopez immediately volunteered to go in for questioning, detectives weren't buying his BS story. You're about to see several video clips from the interrogation of Fidel Lopez. Due to both his accent and the audio quality, I've taken the liberty to provide you with subtitles for a portion of the clips, but I'm hoping that you'll adjust to the sound and accent so that when the subtitles disappear, you'll be able to follow along with what's being said via sound and video alone. Early on, Lopez told the interviewer that Maria had asked him to do unusual stuff to her that night. The detective questioned him about what kind of stuff Maria asked him to do. Here's the first clip. So what, explain, what, what kind of stuff was she asking? What do you mean with the arm? I mean, it's, first she, she started talking like uh, something like, you know, like uh, I was uncomfortable with it, you know, like, uh, one day I want, you, I want you to put a bottle on my pussy, you know. Sorry, I'm just talking right now with you guys, yeah, yeah. you know. I and, want you to you be know, open for respect free. her and... Absolutely. And, you know? You're, and not dis you're not disrespecting her. You're just telling us what she told you. Yeah. What she had, what she know, wanted you to do. You know, it's not, disre not disrespectful. Uh, you know, I'm a man. I'm, I'm her man. So whatever she asks me, I'll do it. Okay. You know? Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Even if she wants me to put my hand in her pussy, I'll put it. Okay. I'll put it. So she was telling me that. And then I don't, I'm, I don't remember really uh, if I did it with the bottle too. Or if I was not, because I really, I was really, really, really. What, what kind of, what kind of bottle are you talking about? It's a beer bottle. A beer bottle. Okay. All right. So, she, what, what did, so what ended up happening? I know she was asking you to do these things. Yeah, what she was happened? asking me all those stuff, and I, you know, I was starting feeling like uncomfortable, like you know, because she never asked for that, and I know she was tipsy, and, but um, when we were doing the stuff and. Of the things, uh, she told me she wanted to throw up to get out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I get out of the bathroom, and I, you know, I was outside, so I put it out smoking a cigarette. I don't remember if the door was already break or something. I really don't know. I know I break it because she 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 is not strong enough to break it. What door are we talking about? The the, the glass door. I, 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 I just remember I see glass on the floor, man. I really don't remember when I break it. 
Oh, why did I break it? You know, to be honest with you, I really don't, don't remember. Okay. The only thing I remember clearly is that I went to the bathroom and she was like, you know, breathing. She was like, like this. And I just want to call 911. And where, where was she? In she was like, uh, between the toilet and the, and the, the shower thing. Like, just, honey, like, and I thought she was throwing in the, in the shower. I mean, but, uh, you know, she wasn't. I mean, you thought she was throwing up? I thought she was throwing up, but, you know, I don't hear any noise. So I'm not the door, she announced it, and I'm getting it straight today. She wasn't breathing. Uh, you know, she was, she was constant. She was talking to me. Yeah. You know? But, you know, one moment I get so so nervous and scared, and then I get the phone and call 911 because she was getting worse and worse. Now, when you called 911, was she, was she still breathing? No, man, she wasn't. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't. I was trying to give her CPR, man. I, I remember I was kissing her and put some air in her stomach. was like up and down, man. And then she wasn't breathing. I, mean, I don't know when somebody is there or not because I've well, never seen the body before. Okay. I you mean, said um, when you first went into the bathroom and you saw her, she was breathing. She was breathing. She was conscious. Okay. All right. She was like... <sighs> And that's what I call 911. And okay. where was she in the bathroom again? She was like uh, in the toilet, be, between the toilet and the and the and the shower. The, 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 the okay. The is thing. is it a is it a shower or a bathtub? Uh, yeah, the, a bath. So it's not just like a, like, a, like a jacuzzi. Like, okay, you know. so it's not a, just a stand-up shower. No, if you want to no. take a bath, you can take a bath in it. Exactly, exactly. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how to say that. No, no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's okay. A, like a... Was she in the tub? No. I, w I was trying to put her there, but I couldn't lift her up. I mean, I was strong. And I don't want her to hit her head or hit something or something, you right, know? Right, right, sure. You know? And uh, but the last thing I do is just put some cold water on her face. I open the shower. Okay. I put some cold water on her face to see if she reacts, and I start, hey, baby, you okay, baby, you okay? I start screaming like a motherfucker, and nobody here, you know? I don't know, neighbors might be here, might be here me scream. Okay. I was screaming for, for help. Right. Is that you what know? you were screaming, is help? Yeah, I was screaming for help, man. Screaming anything else? No, man, I was just, baby, why you do this to me, baby? Wake up, baby. Help, 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 right. you know, because I don't know the address. Sure. I call 911 and tell them, hey, reach my number or something. I don't know how do you guys work. I mean, like, I know you guys could have the system, you know, where the call come from, but, you right. know. So when you, you you say that you, you dial 911 the first time and you're, you're screaming okay. during that time. Okay, I was, uh, uh, what? Were you screaming, you called 911 the first time? I called 911 the first time. Yep. Okay. Did you when, actually speak to somebody? I speak to somebody. Okay. I All spoke right. to somebody, but uh, she was asking me, "Where are you?" The address. You know, I was so nervous that I just took the phone. May I also want to throw the phone away and put it away? Then stop, baby, and scream at her because I was so nervous and I had, I really don't have the patience to deal with the address that I don't know. Where yeah, you I know my work. girl is dying right there, man. You okay. know what it is? Uh, you know, and when I was gonna call for second time. That I find the phone, I went outside and I see the police and everything. Okay. You know, but it's that's that's what happened, man. What kind of sexual acts did you perform tonight? What did you guys do? What I can tell you, I didn't came. Okay. That's that's one thing I can tell you for sure. For sure, I didn't came. Okay. You know, I I was strong. She was strong. She was. Tell me for me to do stuff that I've never done before with nobody, especially with her. I want you to tell me what kind of things. Because you're was, saying she's asking you to do things. I want you to explain. She want me to put my, you know, my arm on her pussy, and you know, stuff like that. Okay. And what what type of things did you do? I know she's asking you. What did you actually? do? Everything she told me to do, I do it. Okay. Which is what? What did she ask you to do? I put my arm on her pussy. Uh, I put my dick in her pussy. I, I believe I got the bottle. It's a, it was a, a small bottle. It was a, like a beer bottle or something like that. And she wanted me to put there too. You know, I just tried to make her happy. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I understand. 
but she was concerned. She was not. She she wasn't like knock out or something like that. I would never do that to my girl. Knock okay. out. You know, okay. that that's not me, man. That's not me. But once we're when we were doing the thing with the arm, that was the last thing. She, she was telling me, I need to throw up. I don't feel good. Or something like that. Where, where then, did this take place? Huh? Where was this when that happened? In the bathroom. You were in the bathroom. It was, we start we start from 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 the from the like I think we start in the in the in the closet. I know we I know we have sex. I know I put my arm in there, I know I put a bottle. But to be honest with you, details, details, details like that, I cannot tell you, man. I was drunk just like her. Okay. I was drunk just like her. Okay. But I know we went to the closet too. I don't remember when or where uh, or how, but we went to the closet. We, we, we were all around and like... What, what, what was going on in the closet? Uh, same thing, sets, and uh, I believe the bottle thing starts there or something like that. What, what other kind of things did you put inside her vagina? Uh, this is the bottle, my arm, my dick, you know, that's it. That, that thing, you know, that's it. She was... She was crazy, man, and I was crazy too. When we walk, we walk for drunk. I mean, like, you know, I like it. She likes it. Now, have you ever done anything like this before? No, man. Has she ever asked to you? To be do honest with like you, no, no. That's what I was kind of surprised today. You know, that's what I was kind of like a little surprised today because she never. We had to get drunk together. Okay. But she never asked for that. But today she she did it. I mean, I don't know because. She drink too much. Okay, the first time I see her like drunk like this. Yeah. The interrogator asks Fidel about an argument he said he and Maria had when the pair got home on the evening in question. Fidel claims that Maria told him that one day she wants him to put a bottle inside of her. He stated that this made him feel a little low at the time because he thought he was unable to satisfy her himself. Lopez claims he knew Maria was drunk, but he stated that sometimes when people are drunk they say the truth. From there, he tells detectives that a verbal confrontation ensued. He claims he calmed Maria down, and then they continued to listen to music as they did more shots of tequila. At some point, a glass became shattered. Fidel says he has no recollection of when this happened. The detectives decide to dig deeper into the details of the argument between Namath and Lopez. So the argument was, she was, you were kind of upset she was talking about your manhood? You thought that maybe no, 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 really. Was, I, you know, I was, I wasn't upset at all. I mean, I just feel a little like down, but not upset because you know, I know she was wrong and tipsy or whatever, and I was in the same. Yeah. And you know, me and her, and you know, before when we were drinking, I was, you know, not the violence with her, but uh, you know, I have to uh, my violence. I have to hit it with something else, the wall, the car, or something. Okay. You know, I'm that I'm that kind of person. You know, not not just with her, just and I'm not drunk, sober. Even when I'm sober, the same person. Never hit her. Never touch her. I know woman you talked about the broken glass. Is there other things that you hit or broke tonight? You know, in my mind comes uh, the computer, comes the laptop. I I believe is I see the laptop somewhere on the floor, like, like. You know, the laptop is, uh, you know, the, 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 the keyboard is uh, plug and unplugging, you know. Okay. I see it in the floor somewhere. I don't know if I throw it or just go to the floor. What about doors or anything like that? There's some damage to the doors. I don't remember. The investigator inquires further about the damage found in the apartment. Fidel Lopez admits that all the damage they saw occurred that night and was caused by him. When asked why he caused all the damage to the apartment, he states that he doesn't know and he can't remember. He knows he was the cause of the damage, but he can't seem to figure out exactly what made him so angry. Then suddenly he mentions that maybe it was because Maria mentioned her ex-husband. However, he goes on to further state that he doesn't believe that this was the cause of his anger. When Lopez is asked exactly when he thinks Maria passed away, he states that Maria told him to get out of the bathroom because she wanted to throw up. But at that time, he believed she was okay. He then says when he returned to the bathroom, Maria was seriously struggling to breathe and he thought she might have been having a heart attack. 
He says Maria had been in a similar state before, presumably under the influence of alcohol, but that time, he put her into bed until she calmed down. What a gent. One of the investigators asks why the water was running in the bathroom when officers arrived at the residence. Lopez claims he doesn't know, but maybe he turned it on. He also claims that he used the shower to splash some water on Maria's face because she wasn't responding. Now remember, the apartment had been badly damaged. There was blood everywhere. There were chunks of flesh all over the apartment. Maria wasn't breathing and she was covered in blood. The water is running in the bathroom sink. Yet our knight in shining armor decided to attempt to resuscitate his incapacitated girlfriend with a little water from the shower. It's strange how Lopez can remember everything that he thinks makes him look like a hero, but he can't explain most of the horror that occurred within the walls of the apartment that his girlfriend just died in. Did you put, try to put her into the tub? I tried to, but she was like, I, I was wrong and I don't want to hurt her, so I just put it like uh, next to the, the, you know, right in the middle of the door when you get into the bathroom, you just put her there, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, and trying to give her a CPR. I don't, I don't even know how to give a CPR, but she wasn't breathing at all. She was with her eyes like uh, open, but not moving. And I, was, I mean, I was scared, man, and I was waiting for police or raking to go to go over there, man. So he wanted to put her in the bathtub, but claims he was drunk and he didn't want to hurt her. He also claims that he attempted to give her CPR, even though he doesn't know how to administer it. Fidel remembers an awful lot for someone who can barely remember a thing. But don't forget, he was scared. When, how long ago what, the glass was broke? When did that, when did that happen? <sighs> if I tell you, man, I, I, I lied to you right now. Because I really don't know when I break the door. I don't know with what. Because I don't got quotes in my head. Okay. You know, it, some you know normally when you break a glass, you caught at least a little bit in your your hands. Yeah. And I don't know if I did it with something or use something. I know I don't use her. <laughs> That's for sure. You don't wet her. I, I don't use her to break the glass, man. Wow. I never hit. I never hit no woman. None in my life, man. Again, Fidel recalls the damage that he caused that night, and he can confirm that he didn't use Maria to cause that damage. But he can't remember all the important details to help the officers paint a clear image of what happened to his dead girlfriend. But they have nothing to worry about because Fidel Lopez would never, and has never, hit a woman in his entire life. He goes on to claim Maria never hit him either but only that she did. But she definitely never did. Except for three times. But also never. Just take a look at the clip. Hey, during your argument or into when you were upset tonight. Do you remember punching her? No, man. With her or anything no. like that? No, man. Okay. Have you ever punched her, hit her, or struck her no. in the past? No. Nothing physical? Nothing. Nothing. We just agree. That's it. Okay. That's it. What about has she ever been physical towards you? No. Has she struck you, no. punched you? No, anything no, tonight? She's not like that. She's not like Nothing that. tonight? Well, not tonight. One day she just hit me in my face three times because I tore her. Uh, she said, I'm going to slap your face. And I said, I'll do it. And she was wrong, also. And she did it three times, hard as fuck. But that's and when, it. when was that? Oh, we were living in uh, Hollywood Bridge. Okay. Uh, Roosevelt Street. What, what did you do when she slapped you? Nothing. <laughs> it just stayed, okay, tomorrow I'm going to remind you of this. Were you drunk too at that time? No. <laughs> I was sober, also. I was sober. I was, you know, she drank at the same, uh, as a, at the same level I drank. So, but you know, I can handle it because I'm, you know, I'm, I got a big body, man. And she's small. She get drunk faster than me. Right. <laughs> Way faster. You know, but never, never, she never touched me, never touched her. Yeah. And you know, I don't, you know, I'm a man, man. I don't, I don't hate no woman. Okay. One of the investigators asks Lopez if the damage in the apartment occurred before or after he and Maria had become intimate that night. Fidel confirms that everything happened before. He states that after the couple argued and Lopez wrecked the place, he and Maria made up and began to have makeup sex. He goes on to explain that he put a beer bottle inside of Maria at her request. Next, he claims Maria told him to insert his arm into her. Not his hand, his arm. 
He claims that he did whatever she asked him to do because he probably felt bad because of the argument and all the damage to the apartment he caused. And it's from there that the interrogation of Fidel Lopez really starts to darken as more horrific details about the night Maria Namath died begin to surface. How did you put the beer bottle in? Put it in. I mean, but how? Did you, the part that you drink out of, you put that in and you put the bottom in? I mean, what did you put in? I really, I really don't remember, man. I mean, like, I just put the bottle. I know do I you used remember, the bottle. Do you remember taking the beer bottle out? Yeah, man. Oh, okay. uh -huh. I ain't gonna leave it there, man. I took him out. I took him out. Did you put the whole beer bottle in? Yeah. The whole just, bottle? Just asking for it, man. You know, I did it. Okay. I did it. All right. And then, then beer bottle. Then what's next? The, I think I used my dick between the beer beer bottle. I didn't came at all because it really uh, there was blood. Once I, you know, with the beer bottle. It was blood, man. I mean, I hate blood. So the, the beer bottle caused her to bleed? I think so. Did the beer bottle break? No. No. Not that I, not that I know. It didn't break at all? No, that I know. There was, I mean, do you remember, was there any sharp, was there any, you know, if it, if a piece of it broke, it's a glass bottle? Yeah, it's a glass bottle. I'm, I'm asking, is it? Yeah, you're asking me. But it, so if it wasn't cracked, it shouldn't be sharp, right? Shouldn't be what? Shouldn't be sharp, like it will cut you. If it's not broken, it shouldn't I know, be sharp. It shouldn't be caught. Right. But remember, man, we're talking about a bottle that didn't speak. Right. So as soon as you took the bottle out, she started bleeding. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. That was blood. I you know it was blood. And where was this at when this was happening? That was. That was in the closet. Trying, trying to move to the to the bathroom. Man. I really, you know, it was crazy, man. Everything was crazy. Everything was that just together. The, the, the break, the door, everything was. Was she was, was she standing was up? One woman, man. Right. And I was, was she, drunk too, man. Was she standing up? Was she up and like walking? No, she was like a uh, four four point position. She like was, on her hands and knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you were gonna have sex with her doggy style from behind. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if we did it from behind. I really don't remember. I think so too. So, okay. how did she get from the closet to the bathroom? Walking. Oh, so she did walk. Yeah, she did walk. And she was she was drunk, but she was okay. But she was bleeding from the clo She started bleeding in the closet. I don't know if she started bleeding in the closet. I know I see blood. I see blood. I didn't realize, but when I see my hand, it was blood. Okay. And then in the bathroom, I know it's blood coming from her pussy. Okay. You know, and I told her, she said, it doesn't matter, it don't hurt, huh? Okay, baby, what, what do you want me to do? Put your arm in me. Okay, baby, sure, huh? Yeah. But she was like, you know, was when, she I, when I start putting the arm and then, like, like five minutes after that, she told me, I'm going to get out of the bathroom, I need to throw up. Okay. So when you were in the bathroom, in, in the closet, cor correct me if I'm wrong, uh -huh. Is when you put the beer bottle in her. Yeah, in the closet, I think so. Yeah, in the closet. Okay, and she was on, in what position? She was on like a like a doggy style position. And you were behind her. Yeah, I was behind her. Okay, and but you and you put the beer bottle inside. I her. put the beer bottle inside. Now, was it a situation where you just just put it in, or were you moving in and out? I'm moving in and out. Moving, I'm moving out. in and out. Okay, you know? and that's when she started bleeding. Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I see blood in my hand. Once we went to the bathroom, I didn't realize it was blood, you know. And she went to the bathroom, and I went there, I see my hand, and said, blood. Okay, but... And I know that's a the beer bottle, I know. I have to be. Okay. Is, did you did you put your, your arm or your fist inside of her in the in the closet as well? No, I didn't. That, that, that I did in the bathroom. Okay, when you got, when, when you got into the bathroom... What position was she in when you were... Same position as the, uh, the beer bottle. She Same. was on the floor? On the floor. On, on, on all fours? Yeah, she was like a doggy star position. And you were behind her? I behind her. Same position. And she said, and she asked you to put your... She asked me to do it. And I told her, baby, are you sure? Am I going to hurt? And she said, no, I don't care. You know? And I told you got blood. And she said, okay, it's not hurting. What I gather is that Fidel is claiming that at some point after he got done with the beer bottle, he put his arm inside Maria even though she was bleeding. He claims the bottle didn't break inside her, 
He also claims he doesn't remember what part of the bottle he inserted into Maria yet. When the detective asks him seconds later if he put the whole bottle inside her, he says, yes, adding that Maria was asking for it. He remembers removing the beer bottle and thinks that's when Maria started bleeding, to which he then continued to penetrate her with his own anatomy. But due to all the blood, he couldn't finish. Because, you know, he hates blood, and there was blood on his hand. According to Lopez, this all happened in the closet. Maria, he claims, then got up and walked to the bathroom herself. Fidel states that she was drunk, but still fine which I find very odd since she was bleeding from her private parts and Fidel later states that she wasn't on her period. It was then in the bathroom that Lopez claims Maria asked him to put his arm inside her. He said he asked her if she was sure and informed her that she was bleeding. He says Maria said it was fine because she wasn't in pain, so Fidel proceeded to do what he claims she wanted him to do. But let me read you a small part of the arrest form that Detective Christopher B. Piper submitted based on his testimony of what he saw when he arrived on the scene at 5.09 a.m., roughly one hour after Maria Namath was pronounced dead. I observed the descendant lying on her back naked on the bathroom floor inside the doorway. Her head was facing out into the hallway. There was blood observed on the bathroom floor, on the walls in the hallway, and on the doors. There was a large amount of blood observed on the floor inside the closet. There were also what appeared to be chunks of bloody tissue on the floor inside the closet. End of quote. Chunks of bloody tissue in the closet? What in under God did poor Maria Namath go through in that closet? This doesn't seem like the work of a beer bottle. This sounds like the work of an absolute rabid and sadistic animal. There's no way that Maria was damaged by an unbroken beer bottle so badly that chunks of flesh were literally ripped out of her. It also doesn't take a genius to assume that she couldn't possibly have walked to the bathroom and requested that Fidel stick his arm inside of her, while chunks of her were lying on the floor in the next room. And there's absolutely no way she didn't feel any pain. The mess that the cops discovered on the scene was reportedly so bad that they thought they'd stumbled upon a home abortion gone wrong. But Maria Namath was not pregnant. Detectives ask Fidel if he put anything else inside Maria. They then mention a couple of other items that they found lying on the floor of the apartment, and they inquire as to whether or not he used these items in the same manner as the beer bottle. He asks them to name these items, and one of the officers proceeds to list off the following. A flashlight, a coat hanger, and hair straighteners. Fidel Lopez comments saying he might have used some of the items on Maria, but he remembers for sure his arm and the beer bottle, but states again that she wasn't bleeding before he used his arm on her. But didn't he say he thought she started bleeding in the closet after he used the beer bottle? And didn't they end up in the bathroom after that where she asked him to put his arm inside her? Hmm, something's not adding up. He continues to tell police that he's being totally honest with them, but... He just can't remember why Maria was injured to the point of brutal, sadistic death. At this point, he's sticking to his story that whatever he did to Maria, he did only because she asked him to. Again, it's odd how he's easily able to remember that, but not what killed his girlfriend. After detectives take a break, they return to the interrogation room and notice that Fidel Lopez has drawn an engine on notebook paper while alone in the room. Imagine you're being questioned after possibly drunkenly killing your girlfriend during sex one week after moving in with her. You got that image in your head? Okay, good, sorry. But would you be in any condition to doodle? Wouldn't you be an absolute emotional wreck? Of course you would, so would I. Any decent-minded person would be. But we have yet to see a single tear from Fidel Lopez. Not one. But after speaking to the medical examiner, Detectives let Mr. Lopez know that it's time for him to come clean. Oh, it's just not for me. Just doodling. Huh? Doodling. What? Doodling. Drawing. Drawing. What is that? Car? Hot rod? I see. Okay. Um, what is that? I'm just curious. It looks like a, a caterpillar engine. Caterpillar engine? Yeah. Okay. We got we got a little bit of a problem. 
often. Yes. All right. I just got off the phone with our uh, crime scene, and the medical examiner is there. Okay, the doctor, and she, there's the injury to her is severe, severe injuries. Severe injuries. Severe injuries. Inside of her body. Yes. Um, multiple injuries inside there. Tissue ripped out. What is that? Tissue inside. All the insides out on the floor. What else? That's, that's the cause of the death? Yeah. We think. You know the amount of blood that's in there? It, her insides were ripped out. What happened, man? What happened? Mm, Fidel, this is not a case of just rough sex. Yeah. Okay? This is not a case of rough sex. Uh, There's blood everywhere. Uh, everywhere. So, listen, just... Tell us. I do, you know, I'm just doing whatever she was telling me to do. She man. wasn't telling you to do that. Because oh, that's, yeah. listen, Fidel, the amount of pain that she would have been in would have been unbearable. Okay? The amount the doctor just looked inside of her and the amount of pain that she would have had, she wouldn't have been able to withstand it. I don't, I don't kill her, man. I don't. We didn't say you, we didn't say you intended to. No one's saying you intended to do it. No one's saying you you yeah. wanted to. I, I, I hear I, I hear your remorse. Listen, I, I heard the remorse in your in your voice when when you're you're trying to get help, and I understand that you care for her, and this is someone that you love. I don't care. But however, there's injuries inside of her that need to be explained. She, she was telling me whatever the, the, what I was doing. She, Tell Listen, me, do it this, do it, man. She was telling me. I she understand, but that's me. that. Listen, you as a human being, you as someone that loves this girl, would not be doing that to her, even if she was asking you. We both were it's, drunk, man. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. That doesn't make a difference in this situation. Okay, there's serious injury to her. There's things that were done in in there, and I think you have a little bit of a conscience, and you were worried. You were you were worried because you you even cleaned the blood off yourself. Okay. And hey, listen, look, you're not you. You love this girl. Okay? I love her, man. Of this course. Is some, so I know what happened in there is not something that you expected to happen. Okay. It just things got things went wrong. Things went bad. But it's important for you to be honest about it. And tell us Mom, the truth, man, because I, I know I know you're saying that you put your arm inside of her. I know you're saying that you put bottles inside of her and everything else, but there's more to it. There's more to this story. There's more to the story, and if you really love and care for this girl, and you have a heart, you'll tell us what happened so that we can have some closure for her. That's, that's because listen, listen, there's more to the story than what you're telling us, and there's more that you remember. Okay, I know you're saying you don't, but you remember ex specific details here and here, but the, the part in the middle, you're blocking out because it hurts you. The fact that that happened, it hurts you that that, that occurred. It's got to be bothering you. I, I Listen, what what they, I just saw pictures, and I'm going to show you some pictures in a little bit, okay, and show you what I just saw. It's devastating. And to do the right thing for her, and the right thing for yourself, and the right thing for her family. I do the right thing. Whatever I have to be I, done, I'll do it. The right thing is to tell us what happened. I'll tell you Tell everything. us the truth of what happened. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you everything, what happened. Everything that I remember, that's what I told you. I know, but there's more that you remember. No, I don't remember You're anything. blocking it out, but there's more that you remember. It's not that there's I'm blocking it out. Fidel, do you, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you want to be looked at as an animal? A what? Do you want to be looked at as a monster? Of course as not. As someone who's careless? Of course not. Exactly. Because I don't think you're that person. I'm not that person. Okay. I have two kids so, and I have my job. But okay, so listen. That's what we're saying. I don't think you're a monster either. I don't think you intended for any of this to happen. Of course not. Okay. But, but at, some point, but you at got, some, point, some point you got upset and you became enraged. That there's there's a point in that time when you when that happened something something snapped something upset you. No, nothing, man. Nothing. Because we just the damage went. that you caused in that house, that house was not in that condition prior to all this going on. 
all of a sudden now there's holes and everything is destroyed. She's got internal injuries that need to, that you're saying is just caused from a bottle, and that's not the truth. Those injuries that's not the truth. There's more that was up inside of her. There's more that was done, and there's no way she could have dealt with that pain without either being unconscious or telling you she to was, stop. She was, she was, she was, she was talking to me. She was like, well, no, maybe, no, may, like, maybe in your head you're thinking that, but no. well, I know she might have been talking at the beginning. But there, there's some point in time when she's not <coughs> conscious because <coughs> what is what was taken out of her is impossible for when her. When she was not conscious, when I came into the, the to the bathroom, she was not breathing. She was like, <gasps> like this. That's the point that she was unconscious. But when we're doing the stuff, she was talking to me. She was telling me, do it, do it, do it. Keep doing. Fidel, just let down. This, this is not rough sex, man. I told you that. This is not, this is, this is a lot more than rough sex. I know, I know. Okay, so if you know, explain to us, tell us. I understand. Tell us. I did everything she told me to do. When I don't, I don't know. I what else did, did you put inside before. of her besides a beer bottle in your fist? What else? This and the bottle. What else? And, and that thing that you said for the hair could be possible too. The flat the, iron? The, the thing for the hair. What else? Nothing else that I remember. What did, in the closet, at some point, stuff that's inside of her came out? And stuff of yeah, her, her stomach, was part of her body, part of her body tissue, is out inside the closet, on the ground. How's gonna, how can that be possible, man? You tell me. It's only possible. It's only possible by what was going on in there. I find it hard to believe that she got up and walked to the bathroom after she what happened to, to her bathroom. inside the closet. She walked to the bathroom. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't bleed out in the closet. She bleed? I no, I like you. bleed out, like not be able to breathe and pass away in the closet from the amount of blood that she lost. No, she was in the bathroom. She, she, she was, she told me she wanted to throw up and when I did come you, back... Did you drag her to the bathroom? <clears throat> no, she was, she was normal. She was like... What do you mean normal? Like, like she could have been normal because her insides are on the floor. She was out. walking. Okay. Look, she was walking to the bathroom. When you put your hand inside of your fist, were you? I'm not trying to be funny when I do this. I'm asking. Did you? Were you doing this? Yeah. Okay. When you pulled your hand out, did you have anything in your hand? I don't know. Blood, I guess. Anything else? Do you feel anything in your I hand? No, that I don't remember. Like you know. Squishy? Just, anything? Just, just blood. I mean, full of blood. I mean. No, oh, come on, man. I'm asking. No one's saying you intended hey, yeah. for this no, to happen. Of course not. Exactly. That's why we're out. We're trying to. We're trying to figure this out. We have to explain to the doctor, and we have to explain to other people that are looking at this what happened. Okay. We have to explain how she got into this condition. Part of her insides, from inside of her body, are on the floor in the closet. We're not saying you're a killer. Okay. No, I'm not. Because you're not a murderer. You're not a killer. This is no. not you. Okay, no, man. but you have to be honest of what happened in there so that we can put the pieces together. Everything I've been telling you is everything I know. You but know, there's some things that you're leaving out. There's I'm some not things. Anything there's out. some things that you're leaving out because you're afraid. You're afraid that it's going to make you, you. You think that it's going to make you look bad. It's going to make other people look at you bad. But you know what's going to happen? If you're not honest and tell us what actually occurred in that house, and we're trying to put all this together. That shows that maybe, you know what, maybe he is a bad person. Maybe he what, is a cold-hearted killer. Maybe he doesn't love her. And I don't think that's you. No, that's not me. It's man. not you. I know you, you, you have care and concern for this girl. All right? Do you love this girl? Of course, babe. Okay. Would you do anything to hurt her? Of course not. Okay. But you did. Right? And I'm not leaving anything out of this. But, but you, did, you understand that you hurt her. Right now, I understand everything you told me. You but you me knew, right now. but but you know you did because you saw the blood. Yeah, blood saw is the not blood. normal. Blood from sex is not normal. That amount of blood is not normal. Okay. Did it, the injuries that were caused to her, she didn't do them to herself. Of course not. And there was no one else in the apartment. It was me. It was you. I know. Okay. I know that. So, explain to us how. Part of her insides, part of her inside of her body. Listen, why, why did you why did you wash your hands? Why did you wash? Because your I went outside to smoke a cigarette. 
why yeah but you cleaned up more than just the, the amount of blood that's in that apartment all over the walls and on the floor you had a lot more blood than just on your arm you had a lot more blood than just on that right arm no you, you didn't taste me man i don't even have soap in my hand it's just pull water and wash the hand where, where else was blood on your body i don't know just my <clears throat> hand maybe this one but Both hands? this one is the one i no this one is the one i use your right arm yeah, this okay. one. But did you have blood on that on that arm? Yeah, if I touch myself for you. What about your legs? The legs and the floor. Well, you had to have blood on your legs because there's blood all over the floor. There's blood on the floor. That's, I what, I have, that's what I have blood on yeah, my legs. But leg. you don't have really a lot of blood on your legs. Did you go into the shower and wash off? No. Because you said you put the shower on. To put water on her face because she wasn't breathing. It's when I called the police, the 911. What about a towel? Did you use a towel? I know. I don't use no to towel. To dry so off? To mm -hmm. wipe anything down? I don't think so. I don't know. No, it's important that you... you I, I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't use nothing. Man. I don't use no, no towels or, or something like that. So after, you, at, after you called 911 the first time and the phone went down, you say you dropped the phone, or you disconnected because they couldn't get the, they couldn't get the address correct. Yeah. Well, what did you do phone. from that point to when the police got there? Try to wake him up. Try to give her CPR or something. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. Okay. Not breathing at all. Did she ever ask for help? No. Her? No. She was a. <gasps> did she ever ask, tell you to stop, or that she was in never, pain or hurting? Never. She was talking. The you know like. Keep going, keep going. That's it. But she never told me stop. I don't know. I don't even know how fucking shit from her body come out of there. Really don't know. I mean, like, well, listen. You see that, right? Yeah. All the way here. If you put your whole arm inside her, you were up inside her stomach. Correct. What the? Why? No, I mean, I'm just saying. You're think. Realistic. Yeah, you're yeah, you're no, putting your no, whole arm thinking, inside her. No, you're, no, thinking, where's no, your no. hand at that point? It's not in her vagina anymore. Right? I understand. It's up inside her stomach. Well, why she didn't tell me to stop or something? We don't know. <clears throat> and the stuff, and, and the part of her body from, the, from her insides that's on the floor, it's not, it, it wouldn't just fall out of her. It would have to be pulled out of her. Uh, I didn't pull anything. I like it. When she had, where was it that she had trouble breathing? In the bathroom. So she was fine in the closet. Yeah, she was fine. She was, she was, she was okay. Let me get. She was wrong, just like mine, just like me. But but I say in the bathroom is when I when I get nervous that she wasn't breathing. Was she coherent? Huh? Was she like awake during that time? I yeah, mean, she you was. Know you're saying drunk, but was she? Did she know what was going on? Of course. She was the one that told me put the bottle on me. I understand. She that. was the one that told me use your hand. I mean, of course, I, I wouldn't do it if she would not told me that. Yeah, I know. I she never... said to put your hand, but you put your arm. Listen. Listen. You know, when you put your arm in someone and go up inside to their and inside their intestines, that's that's damaging. That's damaging. It's not sexual. That's torture. Is it possible that she passed out while you had your arm inside of her? No, she was awake. She was, she was, she was like, like, like having fun. Like, did you know, like, like having fun. It's not like a, like a scream of pain or something. Like just having fun. You know, like that's how come I, that's how come I say I don't. Oh. Were you, were you upset at her? No, I was, of course not. You were upset at something. You were mad. You were angry. Listen, like I explained to you. I mean, you're feeling no pain because you're punching wall holes and walls and doors and everything else and breaking glass. There's. I don't remember when I don't know of that bad. I know I did it. Yeah. But I don't know why, and I don't remember how how we what I break the door. I know maybe the holes with my hand. But, but like, I, like I explained to you earlier, I have that temperature. She knows. She will live in all the places, and she knows I do the same thing. 
I understand. You know? I understand. But then at that point, I think maybe the rage when you guys are having sex continued. I think it continued no, because her. you shoved your fist up into her stomach, inside her, her guts. You know why I think she was passed out when you had your fist inside of her? I'll explain to you why. Why? Because what came out of her insides, there's no way she could have been conscious and not been in horrible, horrible, horrible pain. It's meant to me, it's from, of course, inside of her body, but why when I pull my arm and... You obviously pulled it out. No, I don't, I don't grab anything. I mean, just put my hand. That's it. No, you put, your, you put your arm up to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, like he just said, look how far that is. I know. Okay. I know, but I don't, I don't grab anything and put it back. But, but if it comes something out of there, I, I really don't know. I mean, oh, man. Whoa. His arm was in his girlfriend up to his elbow, and she was telling him to keep going? I don't buy that shit for a second. This monster was angry about something and he was dishing out punishment. And that's fairly obvious. I'll even go as far as to say that I don't believe anything Fidel Lopez did to Maria Namath that night was consensual. Let me remind you again. She was found in the bathroom, while there were chunks of her left in the closet. You do the math. Reports state that multiple people heard a commotion inside the apartment, with next-door neighbors recalling hearing a man's voice yelling inside the residence, coupled with loud banging noises that lasted about two hours. Another man was walking through the parking lot where he claims he heard a woman scream. The woman living in the apartment just below the crime scene stated that she heard loud noises like banging but figured someone was probably just moving stuff. But she did say that after one heavy thud just above them, she actually thought her ceiling fan was going to come crashing down. And yet even another neighbor heard some kind of heated exchange that she thought would have woken up other residents. All of these reports were witnessed around 1 a.m., but no one called the cops other than Fidel Lopez. During the interrogation, investigators ask Fidel if she was pregnant. Fidel says no. They continue to ask if she was pregnant to someone else, but Lopez confirms that he does not believe Maria cheated on him. But there's still a clear gap between what Fidel says happened in the closet and what happened in the bathroom. Detectives want answers. I think there's a point that you're trying to block out because it's killing you right now, it's burning you up because of what happened. And you're thinking back right now thinking, wow, I can't believe I did something like that. But it wasn't you. You weren't in the right state of mind. You, you wouldn't intentionally Listen. hurt her, right? Listen, there's nothing inside of me that I have not telling you. Everything that I know is everything that you know. Okay? You know, I'm not, I'm not hitting nothing. I'm not, you know, I, you know, I prefer to pay 20 years on job just, just for, for, you know, you know, for her family to be okay and they don't think I'm a monster. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think you're a monster. But no one thinks you're you a monster. Know, I don't, I but, don't. But you have to, but you have to be honest and help us put the pieces honest. together from point A to B. You're giving us here, and then there's a gap, and then you're giving us after. That time in between, from that closet to that bathroom, something happened from the closet to the bathroom that you're leaving out. Okay? You guys drank. You had an argument. Yep. Did the argument happen after, possibly? You're saying it happened before. Did it happen after? Did it happen during? Uh, when, when I break the stuff, we was right. Why are you right breaking before stuff? Before we make sets. Okay, so you're breaking stuff. You're having an argument. What is the argument about? I don't know. That's that's, that's what I, um, I don't know. I really, I wish I can remember and I'm telling you. You know, I can't. But see, I can't, that I can't would, but tell you. Do you I understand tell you how anything. that would? I, you, can, I know, but don't you understand how that would make more sense that if you did something during sex that may have injured her, there's a reason. You know, there'd have to be a reason. You're not just going to do it for no, reason is it for, no, for, drunk, for no reason. No. You're not going to hurt her for no reason. You're going to hurt her just because she's drunk? Cause she's no, 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 no. Just because no, you're no, drunk? No, 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 no. You said you've had sex with her when you're drunk before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of you have been but, drunk before. But no, not like yesterday. Yesterday we, we were like really, really, really drunk. I understand that, okay? And But you also said to us earlier that the, the kinkiest or the craziest thing you've done sexually was a 69. 69. Okay, so that's why we're saying something ha else happened here. 
This isn't rubber. this isn't rough sex. I have said okay, that before. I understand that. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. That's you do? Okay, sex. so then explain no. to us what it was. You know, what, what was it was it? to me a rough sex when I was drunk. And for her the same thing. Because she didn't scream with pain. She wasn't telling me to stop. You know, how can I explain? I mean, I don't leave nothing behind. I can tell you whatever. I can tell you, yeah, we have an argument about her edge. And that's it. But I'm not going to tell you that because that I really don't know, man. The, 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 uh, you said that she never said stop. Was, uh -huh. she, was she unconscious? Did she, she was, pass out? She was talking. She, <laughs> she was, was talking. Initially, anyway. Yeah. But you could be, you know, when you get drunk and you you have no idea what's going on and you, you when she was it. unconscious is when I find when I went to the bathroom she cannot breathe in the it's closet. When, did she pass out in the closet? No, she was she was she was like normal, like like normal. She was okay. she wasn't normal in the closet. She had her stomach ripped out of her in the closet. I know you you guys so that's me not that normal. Now, but there's the amount of blood that's in the closet and, and what happened in the closet. There's there's no way that she was either. Saying no and stop because it hurt like hell, or she was unconscious. That's the only she, explanation we can have she here. She wasn't unconscious. She wasn't, and she wasn't telling me to stop. But that, that's the thing. It's one of those two things. No, because there's, she's going to let you rip her stomach out and not say anything? That doesn't make any sense. That, that makes absolutely no sense, Fidel. Does it to you? It does. It doesn't okay, make so, sense. So I'm not. At, we're, so we're on the same page here. I understand. Here. We're on the same page. Okay. Because. Fidel continues to tell officials that he doesn't remember anything else, but he admits to washing blood off his hand and arm before going outside to smoke. Blood and guts inside? Sure. Cigarette smoke? No. Smoke's bad. Better go outside. Wouldn't want to ruin the decor of the place. The interrogation is running in circles. One of the detectives asks Fidel if he would like to take a short smoke break. While doing so, he recommends Fidel write down everything he remembers from the evening in question and hopes that it might help jog his memory. But Fidel still maintains that he cannot remember. Then one of the detectives tells Lopez that he thinks he knows what happened. Fidel asks him what he thinks and the officer tells him that he believes Fidel had trouble performing due to the amount of alcohol he consumed that night. The detective believes that this is what led to the argument. Lopez denies, but still says he can't remember. And that's when the cops turn up the heat. To be honest, man, I really don't know what happened. Listen, I was so... Fidel, so come on. Go. Listen, you remember here, you remember here, and you remember here. Yeah, remember but you conveniently before. don't remember the most important part. You conveniently don't, conveniently don't remember what happened in the closet, what happened in the bathroom. Okay? Or what happened in between the two. The she had her guts was... ripped out in the closet. And you're going to sit here and tell us, come on, you don't remember what the argument was about? We're drinking, we get drunk. I don't even know, not even when I open the holes, when I, when I break the window. I don't, I don't, don't even remember when I did that. I don't, I don't know what was the argument. I know something happened, but I really don't know, man. I mean, like... Fidel, you ripped her insides out of her through her vagina. I didn't mean to do that, man. I understand that, but you did it. What pissed you off to the point where you did that? Was she fucking somebody else? No, did she tell you she wanted to leave you? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking. I'm asking. I don't know. Did she tell you she was having sex with her ex-husband again? No. We were so, I, mean, I was drunk. No. She was drunk. In your house before you, all this started going on, did you start talking about that? When you sat down at your little makeshift boxes, cutting up lines, having... No, the only thing we talk about was the, one of her hands don't like her, her ex-husband. Uh, that's, that's the only thing we, we talk, um, like, you know? How did that conversation come about? You're having a nice night with your girl drink, having drinks, yeah, we, and we you start talking about your, her cousins and her ex-husband? No, because, we, you know, we were just talking about her family or my family and things like that, and, you know? So at some point in the night, Maria's ex-husband was clearly mentioned. Maria also told Fidel that she was considering moving back to Peru to live with her mother. Were these things the cause of Fidel's drunken rage? Detectives struggle to get a straight answer out of Fidel because, of course, he can't remember. So let me address something. There is an argument that can be made here about alcoholic blackouts. 
They are very real and very dangerous. There's a book by Dr. Donald F. Sweeney called The Alcoholic Blackout. Walking, talking, unconscious, and lethal, where the author discusses what he believes happens when someone blacks out from alcohol. From what I remember while reading this book, excessive alcohol consumption may temporarily impair the frontal lobe part of the brain, which is responsible for filtering impulses. Will you put that lampshade on your head and take off all your clothes in the bar? Will you murder someone because you don't like the shoes they're wearing? While I'm sure the science isn't as straightforward as that, my understanding is that these type of thoughts are at least partially filtered from action by this part of the brain. So when the frontal lobe isn't functioning as it should, dangerous judgment has high potential. I believe the author of the book also stated that during an alcoholic blackout, memory cells are often not created, therefore, remembering events that occurred before really may not be possible. It's a good book and good perspective on things, but I still feel as though it needs more professional scrutiny. There are several real-life case examples in the book of some extremely horrific crimes that were committed by people with no violent background, all committed during an alcoholic blackout. And I'll be honest, they do seem eerily reminiscent of this case, initially. The book went so well that Dr. Sweeney began to receive hundreds of emails from people who had terribly frightening blackout experiences while under the influence of alcohol. From them, he compiled another book he called Cries from the Abyss. If you suffer from alcoholic blackouts, you should consider getting these books on Amazon Kindle. They're cheap and a very interesting read. I tried to reach out to Dr. Sweeney, but I'm sad to say that it appears he passed away in 2018. I'll include links to his two blackout books in the description down below. Rest in peace, Dr. Sweeney. While I'll never accept that mental illness or drugs of any kind should fully negate fault for intentionally causing harm to someone else, I do recognize that people can step outside themselves due to certain types of substance impairment. But ultimately, you decided to consume that substance that led you to do what you did. And once you gain control of yourself, you must accept responsibility for your actions no matter what they were at the time of your impairment. Personally, at this point, I don't feel as though Fidel Lopez was blacked out at all. I feel like he's choosing not to remember certain things because they make him look bad. He can remember all the good things he thinks he did that night, but none of the bad shit. And more importantly, I don't see any remorse. Not a single ounce. I don't know about you, but if I did something like this to my loved one while I was blacked out, I'd kill myself immediately. No questions asked. When we do an investigation like this, we, it, we're talking to neighbors, we're knocking on... You live in an apartment complex, mm -hmm. okay? Your neighbors are right there. The walls are thin, okay? So, they hear what sounds like construction going on in the apartment next door, because you're breaking shit for hours. And they hear a male voice screaming for hours. But they don't hear any female voice. Because I was, I was trying, I was... For hours before 911 was called. Before 911 was called? Yes. Around 1 o'clock in the morning. 911 was called sometime around 3.30. Somewhere rough there. saying what? I don't know what you were saying. I have no idea. I remember when I screamed, it was when I, I know that she wasn't breathing. It's when I started screaming. Okay, but... Okay. That's where, that's where, it's, where, where I screamed. But you didn't call 911 right away. Uh, of course I did call 911. I called 911 when she wasn't breathing. I called 911 right away. to suspect. You know? It, Two it, hours prior to you called 911, you were yelling and screaming and, and breaking things in the house. A breaking thing is, is, is and, that's, that's right. true. Uh, and you're yelling and screaming, but yet there's no female voice yelling and screaming. Do you understand what we're trying to say? Maria wasn't yelling and screaming because Maria couldn't scream. Because either A, she was passed out, or she was dead already. No, she wasn't dead, man. She was like this when I called that one. So for two hours, roughly two and a half hours, what were you doing besides breaking up your apartment? I think you were breaking up the apartment because you realized two, that for two and a half hours she was dead. And you panicked. Panicked when you realized it. Started breaking shit, not knowing what to do. You took it too far. Took it too far. Okay? This is what I think. And then eventually you called 911. Something made you so angry that this happened. Okay? Ripping out... 
your girlfriend's insides physically and them being on the floor in the closet is not rough sex. We've gotten past that part. Okay? What caused you to become so violent? Alcohol. And, and what? And what? Not just the alcohol. You don't go from a penis to a beer bottle to your whole fist and up to your elbow. That just doesn't happen. Without some type of reason. Exactly. And that happened because you got so angry. Okay? And that's what we want you to explain to us. Paint the picture for us of what happened so you look like a human being that just snapped. Okay? Instead of some sadistic monster who said, you know what? Fuck this bitch. I'm just going to rip her guts out. I don't think you're that person. Either does he. But you have to explain to us so we can explain to other people. Listen, he, had no, he didn't mean to do this. He really didn't. They got into an argument. They got into a fight. And, and, and you know, with the alcohol, one thing happened, you know. But you have to explain that to us. The very um, the, the crime scene, the, the, they, they shake the, she had something with the, with the tequila caused something to her too. The tequila? Well, yeah. it caused her to be intoxicated. Absolutely. Intoxicated and something to, because she wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing, I understand that. She wasn't breathing because she was bleeding, she bled out. Because of what was ripped out from her insides. That's why she wasn't breathing. It takes more of a man to admit when he's wrong than it takes a man to cry. Be that man. Be that person. Because that's who you are. Mm, she was telling me she, she going to Peru. She, was, she needed to go to Peru because she, she was missing her mother. And, you know, and I'm not going to be able to use the car to go to work and... You know, the just start screaming at me and all that. Uh, I get pissed and start punching the shit. I really don't remember when I punched the shit. You just tell me. I know I get pissed because of that. Then, then after that, I don't know how how we end them up in the class or whatever. I know we made peace, but when we were doing. Uh, making love, she told me something that, that I really don't, it just, she, she changed my name, she called me the, the other fucking name of the other guy, and then she said it twice, and she was wrong, and she was confused with me with him, I, I didn't want to kill her, I know I killed her, that's whatever I did with her was the reason, but she was asking me about the bottle. And she was asking me about the hand too. And maybe things go a little bit far because, you know, once she, she's confusing me with the other one and she told me to do stuff with her that I've never done before, I think that she might think that's, that's, that's all the stuff that she does with the other one before. Things go out of hands. I know, you know, never mean to kill her. Did at any point she tell you it hurts? Stop. Never. That's that's one of the stuff that it's never. But okay. The, if she were telling me that I was screaming or something, somebody would hear it. So she was, me. was she passed out? No, she wasn't passed out. She was calling me the other dude name. Where was that at? Was that in, in the closet? In the closet. This is where we start over there. Okay. Explain to us. Tell us what happened. Then. We were fucking, and she was telling me the other dude name. What name was she calling you? Uh, Norbert. Norbert? Is that her ex-husband? Yeah. Okay. So, you know... So what did you do at that point? At that point, I got mad. I got really, really mad. You know, it makes me feel bad, very bad. I mean, like... Like you feel like he was, like you were not adequate enough, like you couldn't satisfy her. Uh, I'm asking you. No, that I'm always satisfied. <coughs> she was, she was okay with me, but I don't know just what happened with her. 
she, she gets so drunk, and I don't know why she was confusing me and telling me Robert and besides Fidel. I was drunk, very, very drunk. I know you're frustrated. You're drunk, you're frustrated, you're upset. I didn't well, mean you're to angry. kill her, man. I, know, I really don't mean it. to kill her, We man. understand that. We understand my that. love, man. We but understand that. But she pissed you off because she called you another man's name. I can tell you right now, if I'm having sex with my wife and she calls out another man's name, I'm going to get pissed off. Okay? It's human nature, dude. Don't, don't, don't. It, this, this is not human, man. I just took her life. I don't mean to, but... Did. Because you got enraged. Well, because I was wrong. If I was sober, maybe I understand. Maybe I just left the apartment. But I was wrong. Fidel Lopez basically just admitted that he pulled out his girlfriend's insights through her private parts because she accidentally called him her ex-husband's name. It made him angry because he thought the stuff they were doing was stuff that Maria and her ex used to do. At some point, Fidel also admits that Maria didn't walk to the bathroom. She crawled. In my opinion, this is one of the worst cases of jealousy that I've ever heard. Fidel continues to blame what he did on alcohol and states that if he was sober, he might have just left the apartment. But he didn't. And the whole blackout theory has now flown out the window due to his admissions. The detectives ask Fidel why he lied at the start of the interview. He says because he was scared. They've also asked him several cognitive questions like what he was wearing throughout the interrogation. I would imagine this is for the purpose of countering his can't-remember answers later on during his trial. For the record, he seems to answer these questions correctly with no problem. It's only questions of any wrongdoing where he forgets. As you'll see in the next clip, Fidel Lopez is only concerned with himself. If you'd like to watch the full unedited version of Fidel's released interrogation video, I'll upload the full thing to the channel later. Feel free to watch it yourself. If I'm having sex with my wife and she calls out another man's name, I'm going to get pissed off. Okay? It's human nature, dude. Don't, don't, don't. It... This, this is not human, man. I just took her life. I don't mean to, but I did. That's because you got enraged. Because I was wrong. If I was sober, maybe I understand. Maybe I just left the apartment. But I was wrong. I guess I'm going to jail right Are you right? sorry for what you did? Huh? Are you sorry for what you did? If I'm sorry? Yeah. Of course, man. What do you think? Why were you not telling us the truth at the beginning? I'm screwed, man. I'm not gonna see her again. I'm not gonna see my kids. Man. It's something that bothers me right now, man. I really want to ask you because I know I'm going to jail. But, like, how many times do you think it's going to be this? What do you want to ask her? No, to who? What did you say? You want to ask her something? No, to you. Oh. Like, I know I'm going to jail. Mm -hmm. I have two kids and, you know, and everything. How many years do you think this is going to cost me? I don't know. I can't tell you that. I, I have no idea. Fidel admitted to becoming a monster when Maria Namath called out her ex-husband's name during intercourse. According to Fidel's arrest affidavit, he became enraged when Maria called out her ex's name during sex in the closet. It was at this time he left the closet and began to destroy the apartment. When he returned to the closet, Maria was so drunk that she was unable to resist Fidel, and that's when he began to insert things inside her including the beer bottle, both his fists, and yes, the hair straighteners. He also put some of these things in her anal cavity as well. The affidavit also states that Fidel admitted to pulling and ripping bloody tissue out of Maria through both of the aforementioned places he'd previously been inserting foreign objects into. He said Maria never regained consciousness the whole time. It was then that he washed his hands and went outside to smoke a cigarette. Upon returning inside, Fidel went to the closet and tried to cover up his girlfriend's insides before going back to the bathroom to find that Maria was no longer breathing. That's when he called 911. Some of the reports I've read state that the hair straighteners were actually on at the time of insertion, but I haven't been able to find a medical examiner's report to validate this claim. I have applied for it, and everything else publicly available on this case, so at some point I do plan to make an update video. But for now, that's pretty much all the details available, and they are absolutely depressing.
In 2017, Fidel Lopez was convicted of the murder of 31-year-old Maria Namath. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He accepted a plea deal to avoid the death penalty. Before he was sentenced, Lopez stated via a translator that he was happy to fulfill his conviction and agrees that what he did must be paid for. He went on to ask Maria's family for forgiveness. I didn't see any tears or emotions in the face of this monster, not even during the clips I could find on his trial. Fidel Lopez didn't even seem embarrassed. Maria's father stated, If I had to summarize the life of Maria, it would be very difficult to express it in a few lines. I just want to tell you all that she was and will continue to be a model of affection, effort, perseverance, and love of humanity. What a mortifying story. It has been hard to describe this case in words. Even now my thoughts evade me and even though I've done so much research on this case, I still don't feel desensitized to the details. I just can't imagine what poor Maria Namath must have gone through. And I'm sure Fidel Lopez isn't telling us everything. I'm positive of that. I did reach out to him for a statement, but I haven't heard anything back. In my research, I did manage to find that in and around 2014, he was arrested for drunken disorderly conduct. I'd be very interested to find out the details of that, but I hit nothing but dead ends in every direction. I found other reports online about Fidel being a bit of a nuisance in terms of playing loud music a lot and parking wherever he wanted, but ultimately, there's very little information publicly available on him. Until I get the requested case files, I'm stuck at a red light. This is such a sad and horrific case that I don't really know what to say here. A stunning woman lost her life because of a monster's jealousy. This evil man tortured her to death one week after they moved in together. Fidel's mom states that he was a sweet boy, but I don't know. I'd love to know what his ex-girlfriends have to say about him. I sense the evil and sadistic temper of a psychopath without remorse. In my opinion, Fidel Lopez is a small individual with fragile feelings, and I wish he was burning in hell right now. I know a few of you don't like it when I take verbal swings at these real-life villains. You want me to show maturity, compassion, understanding, but there's no way in hell I'll concede that honor to people like Fidel Lopez. As far as the case of Fidel Lopez goes, this wasn't a momentary crime of reflex or relapse in judgment. This is not the kind of action that can be fixed. This was a two hour long nightmare in which an innocent victim was literally turned inside out by the person she loved and trusted the most. If you want to show mercy to Fidel Lopez's mental state at the time of the crime, be my guest. But I won't. Hey, some cases that involve murder just may be able to be rectified in a correctional facility with time and therapy. I'm sure those cases exist, but this is not one of them. And I don't play by the rules of Batman. This is an update to the Fidel Lopez case by Mr. Black at The Disturbing Truth. Warning, this will be rough. So. Some people still believe Fidel Lopez and they think he's telling the truth about Maria Namath, that her death was the result of rough sex. Let me be the first to tell you that that's clean mental and you're barking mad. Oh, and that's just based on the evidence out there. And I'm about to give you more. After I uploaded the video, I was surprised at how many people sympathized with Fidel. I mean, it was nowhere near a majority or anything, but a little tiny handful. Enough to be a little concerning. Some people even thought he was telling the truth and that suction from his fist caused Maria's insides to come out of her. So I went out and did two things. First, since I couldn't find it online, I obtained a copy of Maria Namath's full medical report. Then I consulted with a friend of mine who happens to be a doctor capable of reviewing that report with me. Let me start by saying that Maria had injuries all over her body, including a heavy blow to the back of the head and defensive wounds on her body. In Maria's southern regions, her two cavity entryways were so badly damaged that they couldn't be distinguished from one another. She was quite literally split between them, and that was just at the entrance and shortly past that. Inside she had injuries that could only be made if Fidel used his fist and violently punched her in there with severe force repeatedly. This was not rough, playful fun. 
and it certainly wouldn't feel that way. The pain she would have been in would have been unbearable for anyone. And that's coming from a doctor. Also, Fidel pulled out several pieces from her body. One of those pieces was 13 feet long, and that was just one of the parts he pulled out. There were multiple pieces. This was not caused by suction. And this crime Fidel committed was not during a blackout. Notice in his testimony that he only doesn't remember things that make him look bad. Oh, he remembers everything else, including things that might make him look innocent in his situation, but he magically blinks out at the places that make him look even remotely violent. That's real magical, especially considering he doesn't remember anything that he did. And to answer another question someone had, no, according to the medical report, Maria was not pregnant. But there's something about this case we need to talk about. Fidel also mentions that Maria wanted him to stick things in her that night and that she'd never asked him to do that before. He also stated that he had never done that stuff with anyone else before either. Well, I had the chance to speak to Fidel Lopez's ex-girlfriend from high school. She wants to be kept anonymous, but she did provide me with a photo of her and him from back in the day. Looks like they were in high school. And I couldn't find that photo anywhere else online, so I got a feeling she's telling the truth. We'll call her Allison. Allison claims it didn't take much to make Fidel angry. She dated him for a year after he relocated to Florida from Cuba. Allison stated that Fidel was a highly jealous and controlling individual. He told her she wasn't allowed to wear leggings, and if a male friend of hers attempted to greet her in the hallway at school... Fidel would try and fight them at the drop of a dime. Allison said his mom was a nice, sweet, religious lady. Her and Fidel's father both worked nights at Walmart. They lived near the Everglades at the time. Fidel Lopez also has a fraternal twin, a brother. I'm not going to name his name. But strangely enough, Allison also stated that Fidel tried multiple times to stick objects in her, including a candle. She said he was her first and... This made her feel very uncomfortable. Ultimately, she just put it down to some kind of kink and went along with it. Never thought much else about it. But nevertheless, I find it kind of odd. Especially considering Fidel had never done anything like that before the night he claims Maria asked him to put stuff in her. Fidel reached out to Allison a few times via social media. The last time he did so was a week before he killed Maria and he wanted to know when he'd see Allison again. She declined his offer. A short while later, his mugshot came up on her timeline. It quite literally could have been Allison if she'd chosen to meet with Fidel. Allison concluded that during the time she dated him, Fidel kind of seemed like a decent guy with a very bad temper. She did say one thing about Fidel that was odd. The last time Allison spoke to him, he had a lot of satanic pictures and writing on his Facebook page, including what she thought was Hebrew. According to her, Allison never believed in the devil until Fidel killed Maria. Now she thinks the devil is what took him over that night. But as for me, I don't blame anyone other than Fidel. He said he was mad about Maria mentioning another man's name, but at the same time, he was going behind her back to talk to his ex-girlfriend about meeting up. If you're still fooled by the lies of Fidel Lopez, there isn't much I or anyone else can do for you. He's a monster. He's where he belongs. And he's never leaving. Now, I think we've pretty much summed that and up in for closing, the second time. Rest in peace, Maria Namath. A 31-year-old beautiful woman who never got to be a mother because her life was brutally cut short by a monster's jealousy.